Kyrie Irving has looked really bad after the media reported his quotes. The media gets lots of clicks and money every time Kyrie says anything to reporters. It's no wonder with Kyrie looking so bad in the media, he's doing a media blackout. No more TV, no more websites. At least on the first day of training camp, Kyrie is his own man. And that is the first sign the Nets will be losers this season. This video explains why Kyrie's media blackout is ridiculous and why, yes, it means Brooklyn will lose. Hey, it's Casey Kiernan. Welcome to AM Hoops. Hit subscribe and notification bells. You know about the push for 100K if you're a subscriber to this channel. If you're not, which like 90% of you who watch this are unsubscribed, we need you to get to 100K by January 1st. We put out five videos per week. Monday through Friday, always at 9 a.m. Eastern. The season is starting. We are pumped up, but we will not hear from Kyrie Irving. And believe it or not, I actually understand why Kyrie is doing this. Yes, I think it's ridiculous, but I get it. The Nets all-star guard announced he would not speak with the media on the first day of camp. Not social media, like LeBron James to focus for the playoffs, the media. His publicist later clarified that Kyrie just didn't want to talk to reporters that day. Kyrie and his teammate Kevin Durant both have a negative relationship with the media. They say almost anything, the media reports it, and they usually look bad. That's the media for you. Always out for clicks. They don't care what people actually meant or if it causes drama in the locker room. They just want that paycheck. In journalism, it's called a gotcha soundbite. Reporters set someone up with a question that will make headlines. It is dishonest, but it does get clicks. In Kyrie's case, there have been so many controversial soundbites. The time he supported social change, but not the NBA bubble. The time he posted that really long rambling nonsense after Celtic fans booed him. Or that time he went on Kevin Durant's podcast and suggested LeBron James isn't clutch. Or that the Nets don't have an actual head coach right after Steve Nash was hired. Or when he said the earth was flat. Those are just recent examples, by the way. Yep, all those moments created a negative image around Kyrie Irving. The media reported them all and got paid. But here's the thing, the media did not set Kyrie up on any of those moments that I just talked about. Kyrie just said all of them, including on Kevin Durant's podcast. There's no gotcha journalism going on to make Kyrie look bad. He does a great job of that himself. The perfect quote about this is from Kyrie's ex-teammate, Richard Jefferson. Quote, the issue with this is you went on Kevin Durant's podcast and you were saying these things. So we in the media are not creating clickbait. You and Kevin Durant are creating clickbait. <laughs> exactly. One thing Kyrie took a lot of crap about, for example, was a quote where he named all the Nets core players by name and left out certain guys. He had to go back and explain himself to his teammates. The media set him up, except they didn't. No one even asked him to name the core. They just asked, hey Kyrie, what do the Nets need to do to get better? And then he launched into that controversial rant himself. And here's what he said next day to reporters as an explanation. You know, at the end of the day, um, I always say it's an entertainment league. You know, we're, we're very drama filled. We, you know, everything regurgitates on all these media uh, platforms, which is part of our society. I can't really do anything about it. Okay, so Kyrie took zero responsibility there and he just blamed it on, well, it's an entertainment league or, oh, well, we're in a drama league, that's what you get. Actually, no, Kyrie, it's possible to be boring as hell with the media. So I worked in San Antonio for two years covering the Spurs on TV, and Danny Green was the most boring soundbite ever. Like, we would interview Danny and it would just be like, you're like falling asleep, right? And this is when like dramatic stuff's going on, like all the Kawhi drama. It'd be great to have it for longer periods of time, but we know it's gonna take some time to build that as a process. <laughs> we always had, you know, Top one of the top records in, in the West um, last couple of years. And the reason Danny Green is boring as hell is he gets it. Talking to the media is literally part of the job. Players owe it to the game and the fans to create interest and be asked tough questions. 
The league literally forces teams and players to talk. Otherwise, the Spurs wouldn't do it, believe me. Danny Green and others treat it like part of the job and keep it professional. Kyrie does not, and he is the problem here. But still, why does this mean anything for the Nets on the court? Well, the reason is Brooklyn is being led by two diva, sensitive, dramatic stars, and that never works. Kevin Durant has the exact same relationship with the media. The type of organizations across sports that win are disciplined. They don't have a lot of drama behind the scenes. In football, it was the Patriots for 20 years. The most boring sound bites in the NFL. What was the explanation the officials gave you on that Nikhil Harry looked to be a Yeah, you have to talk to them about that. I'm not going to speak for them. We mentioned the Spurs, same deal, but if you look at recent examples, like the Warriors are led by Steve Kerr and Steph Curry, two drama-free, focused professionals who get it. The Lakers had a ton of drama behind the scenes and couldn't beat the Pistons, even though the Lake Show had Shaq, Kobe, and other Hall of Famers. Yes, Kyrie has won a championship, but he was not the best player on the Cavaliers. By 2016, LeBron had learned how to handle the media, and now the media is on his side. He went through the decision in 2010. LeBron was the villain of the NBA, and the league hated him. You could say the media hated him. But what did LeBron do? He put the blame on himself. Doing the decision was a bad decision. Was it Jim Gray's fault for asking the questions? Was it ESPN's fault for airing it? No, LeBron, a mature professional, took the blame and learned from it. Now he's got a great relationship with the media and it's helping him to build a billion dollar empire. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant could learn a lot from LeBron James and his mistakes, but I don't think they will. Let's be honest about these guys. KD is already in his 30s and Kyrie just seems way too far gone. I think something will happen this season, even if Kyrie doesn't talk to the media, that totally ruins the chemistry in the locker room. I don't know exactly what it's gonna be or who's gonna say it, but this Kyrie media blackout is a huge red flag. It clearly shows that Kyrie still doesn't get it and the Nets aren't gonna hold him accountable. It would take a Zen master, Phil Jackson-like coach to balance the Nets' egos. I'm just not sure that Steve Nash is that guy. He could be, but we don't know. I do know that Mike D'Antoni, an assistant coach on that team, isn't that guy. Look, Kyrie can have a media blackout all he wants, but it's not gonna change anything. He just needs to learn that talking to reporters is part of the job and there's a certain way to answer questions. For now, the media blackout is just the first sign to me that these nets will go down in flames. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.